Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. In today's video, we're going to briefly analyze how Italy's pressing superiority over Switzerland resulted in a comfortable 2-0 win for Roberto Mancini's men. So when we break down the game and we do look at the board, there were no real tactical surprises from either side. Italy persisted with their 4-3-3 and Di Lorenzo started at right back for the injured Florenzi. And when we shift to Switzerland, they made no changes to their 3-4-1-2 and it was the same personnel that did draw that 1-1 game against Wales. So in today's video, we're going to break down how both sides look to press and why it was so integral to the overall outcome of the game. However, when you consider both systems, this should have been a pretty straightforward pressing battle for both sides. When you look at Italy, they are in a 4-3-3, but if they were looking to press high as they did, you have Berardi, Immobile, and Insigne stepping towards the three center backs. Then you would see Spinozola and Di Lorenzo pushing high on Rodriguez and Mbabu. And then when you look at that midfield battle, Jorginho would stick to Shakiri, and then you'd have Barella and Locatelli pushing towards Jaka and Fruler if they look to drop off deeper. The issues that Switzerland encountered in their opening game against Wales was getting the ball into their front three, and in the opening stages, Shakiri was often waiting in between the lines or looking to shift out of position into the wider areas to get on the ball. What worked for Switzerland in that game was that Shakiri began to drop off deeper to pull away Joe Allen, and that created space for the back three to instantly play balls into Obolo and Seferovic. The issue that Switzerland encountered here was that Shakiri was tracked by Jorginho when he looked to drop off deeper, and along with Italy's press swarming that back three, whenever balls were punted into Obolo and Seferovic, the Italian center backs did a very good job of ensuring that they couldn't get on the ball freely. Here you witness Insigne stepping towards Elvedi, while Immobile is prepared to push towards Shar, Locatelli stepping into the path of Fruler calling for the ball, and you could see Barella shifting laterally across the pitch in case Jaka does receive possession. This time you see Spinazzola and Locatelli tracking the movement of Mbabu and Fruler as they drop back into their position, and when Shakiri receives the ball near the touchline, it's Jorginho shifting across to ensure that he's unable to break into the Italian half. If we look to another example, it's Berardi hounding a Kanji who is on the ball, while Immobile sitting on Char, you could see Insigne prepare to step out to Elvedi if the ball was switched into that zone, and that's where you also see Jorginho and Locatelli stepping into the path of Xhaka and Fruller as Barella occupies space in the right channel. Minutes later, it's Berardi blocking off the passing lane into the path of Rodriguez as he steps towards Akanji, you have Immobile near Char, and then you see Barella stepping towards Xhaka who is checking into the ball, and then you also have Locatelli just ahead of a fruler. Meanwhile, when we focus on Italy, Roberto Mancini didn't stray away from his overall attacking approach. Berardi was holding the touchline while Di Lorenzo tucked in a bit narrow to form a back three with Bonucci and Chiellini, while Spinazzola looked to push forward to peg back Mbabu, and Insigne was looking to tuck in central in between the lines, or you check into the ball to pull out Alvedi, who did stick tight towards him. Locatelli was shifting towards the outside of Shakiri or one of the front two to get on the ball away from pressure from Fruller, and Barella was pushing into advanced positions, and he was receiving receiving the ball to the outside of Xhaka in a pocket of space between Xhaka and Mbolo or Xhaka and Seferovic. And there were times where we did see him swapping positions with Berardi, meaning that he would hold the touch line and Berardi would tuck in central. Or there were times where Barella was holding the touch line and pulling out Rodriguez. And Berardi was also in that same zone, but a bit higher. And Akanji would be forced to shift out into that zone. Ultimately, the issue that Switzerland encountered was that unlike Italy, who pressed high and ensured that they couldn't play out of the back, when Switzerland looked to disrupt Italy's build-up play, Italy were still able to get the ball into attacking areas. When you look at their overall shape, technically it should be very simple. You should have Seferovic and Mbolo sticking towards the center backs, Shakiri sticking on Jorginho, and then you need Rodriguez and Mbabu pushing towards Spinazzola and Di Lorenzo, with Akanji and Delvedi dealing with Insigne and Berardi. However, the manner in which they did look to press, Witness Seferovic shifting towards Di Lorenzo who was holding a narrow position. And then Shakiri was stepping towards Bonucci and looking to block off the passing lane into Jorginho while Mbolo stuck on Chiellini. Ultimately, the main issue that they encountered now was that although Shakiri was blocking off the passing lane into Jorginho, he wasn't sticking tight on Bonucci who is a very good passer from those deeper positions. And there were times where Xhaka and Fruller weren't tied on Locatelli and Barella and Bonucci was able to play positive passes into the midfield zone to help advance their play. 
Here you could see an example of Shakiri blocking off the passing lane into Jorginho, but not as tight to Bonucci as expected. And that's where you see Barella to the left of Xhaka, who isn't closing him down tight. And Rodriguez in an advanced position just ahead of Di Lorenzo. And beyond Barella, you could see Berardi looking to make a run beyond Akanji. That ultimately results in Bonucci sliding the ball across Shakiri and finding Barella in a pocket of space between Rodriguez and Xhaka. Here you could see Seferovic stepping towards Bonucci but blocking off the passing lane into Di Lorenzo. But the issue that the Swiss have here is that Shakiri isn't tight on Jorginho who's shifting towards his left. When Jorginho receives the ball, you see Shakiri looking to Harry over, but Xhaka's not picking up his marker in Barella, and Rodriguez is in an advanced position not closing down Di Lorenzo, and Jorginho instantly splits those two Swiss players to find Barella between the lines, and that allows him to turn and slide it out to Berardi to run at Akanji. Nevertheless, while the Swiss did improve their pressing throughout the game, the other main difference difference between the two sides was the vertical running from the Italian midfield, specifically Locatelli and Barella, who were involved in the opening two Italian goals, whereas Fruller and Xhaka didn't make that movement, and Shakiri struggled to have an overall impact on the game. In the build-up to Italy's opener, look at Switzerland's press. Once again, it's Shakiri blocking off the passing lane into Jorginho, but this time he's much closer to Bonucci to force the pass sideways. But here you have Xhaka and Fruller stepping high to close down Jorginho and Locatelli, while Seferovic, not Rodriguez, is near Di Lorenzo, and Mbolo's ready to step out to Acerbi. However, as that play develops, you could see Acerbi sliding the ball across Mbolo for Spinazzola, who's closed down instantly by Mbabu, and that results in Spinazzola playing a first-time ball into towards the halfway circle. The issue that the Swiss had wasn't the fact that they bypassed the press. Look at the movement here. You have Berardi just ahead of Rodriguez, and you have three Swiss defenders ahead of Barella in the penalty area. But we'll focus on Locatelli who's looking to make a run while Fruller and Jaka are within close proximity. What happens next is that as Berardi takes the ball towards the byline, now look at the movement of Locatelli. He's looking to make a run beyond Fruller and Jaka, who are ball watching and not tracking his movement. And if Berardi beats Rodriguez, Akanji has to shift over, and Char is focused on the movement of Barella. And with both Swiss players taken out of the game, it allows Locatelli to break free into the six yard box for the tap in. And while we did witness a much aggressive press from the Swiss to start the second half, with the wing backs pushing high to close down the full backs and the front three closing down the Italian center backs and Jorginho, Italy were able to kill off the game in the opening five minutes and once again what you see here is Jorginho having time and space on the ball and Locatelli looking to push forward beyond Fruller and Xhaka into an advanced position. When Locatelli receives the ball he's able to instantly slide it across Xhaka into the path of Barella who charges forward in towards the Swiss half and from that break it results in Locatelli receiving the ball at the edge of the box to put Italy up 2-0. Following Mbolo tracking back to win possession from Spinazzola you could witness Fruller being closed down by Spinazzola and looking to pass the ball into Xhaka, but focus on Barella looking to step forward to close him down. When Fruller plays that pass, you could witness Barella sticking tight towards Xhaka to apply pressure, and what happens next is that he forces the ball back in towards the path of Fruller, and he guides it into the path of Akanji, but that's when you see Berardi stepping in to try and win the ball as it's a loose pass, and it forces it into the path of Char, who is now closed down by Barella and Demoble, and he's looking to play the ball into the path of Akanji to clear his lines, but he ends up clearing it into the path of Insigne, who's now able to break at the Switzerland backline. So as you can see, this was a simplistic tactical battle that was won due to Italy's aggressive high pressing and the vertical movement of Locatelli and Barella to help Italy remain perfect at Euro 2020. Hi everybody, thanks for watching and subscribe here for your latest tactical analysis and daily commentary on the interview show. And if that wasn't enough, don't forget you could find more organic unfiltered soccer slash football analysis on the interviews podcast, the best soccer slash football podcast in the world, available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and any Android apps on your Android devices.